friends this is patal and you are watching my channel bp tutorials and today i have come after a long time with my poem analysis series this is for icsc english literature poems i'm going to explain this to you in different different forms it will actually come in three parts today you are going to get to know about the first part line by line analysis of the poem the heart of the tree the first poem in the icsc poem series and uh, let's see how it goes i hope you will like it if you like it of course do not forget to like subscribe and share i am eagerly waiting for it thank you for watching and uh, before i begin i would say welcome to bp tutorials and you can get these files that i'm going to discuss today here in www.gooutpace.com .com you can go over there and get the text file and uh, get the things done over there so let us talk about it the heart of the tree this is line by line analysis and remember this is part one why am i saying part one we are going to have total three parts of each poem one is going to be analysis as i said in the introduction video there will be analysis there is going to be this line by line explanation and we are going to even get question and answer these three things will be there in three videos so today what what we are going to do is line by line analysis anyway see stanza one i'm going to begin with what is a plant who plants a tree here the poet begins with a question before you get into this you see after each and every line i have put the rhyme scheme keys you see this one begins with a second with b then goes third with a so it clearly shows the rhyme scheme that follows in the poem anyway when we shall get into analysis of the poem in detail we shall talk about it in detail anyway stanza one take a look at what does he plant? Who plants a tree? The poem here begins with a refrain. What is a refrain? Refrain is a literary device in which we shall find that either at the beginning or the end of successive or uh, some stanzas, same line is repeated. And generally it caters the main theme of the poem. Anyway. See, the poem begins with a refrain clearly indicating what the poet wants to convey to the readers. What he wants to say. The poet begins with a question which he repeats in every stanza. Here he not only asks the direct and immediate benefits of planting trees, but also, remember, it is not only about the direct and immediate benefits of planting trees, but he even indicates. What he indicates? overall and indirect positive aspects of planting trees that he wants to tell here it is not only planting a tree rather than if you plant a tree you rather invest for something very huge and positive get to the next line he plants a friend of sun and sky so remember a thing this is very uh, important line and here he says that a person who goes on Planting a tree is akin similar to planting a friend of sun and sky. When we plant a tree, we ensure what? Abundant fresh air which helps us to a pollution-free atmosphere with a productive rain cycle. This is vital. So if you have planted trees, then we have what? We have fresh air. We have fresh air. Then we have got a pollution-free atmosphere. And even we have productive rain cycle, which is very vital for the health of our planet. Besides planting trees, we even ensure what? 
healthy earth as it will help us to protect ozone layers obstructing the harmful rays from the sun so in other way you can say that you are a friend because of the closeness we get close when we plant a tree however this next line take a look at you will see that i have stated here a figures of speech figures of speech used metaphor what is metaphor he plants a friend that means here tree has been this tree has been compared with a friend one who plants a tree plants a friend this is an example of metaphor here come to the next slide he plants the flag of breezes free you see uh, there are going to be various versions to it but the most probable and clean and direct logical version that comes is here the poet goes on stating the plant as a flag he says that who who plants a tree will surely experience the tree as a flag as in the strong breeze what happens branches and leaves of tree have a one way move giving it a shape of a flag so this is third line figures of speech what are the figures of speech is used here metaphor the plant is compared with a flag you can see here and figures of speech use here inversion what is inversion it is a literary device in which we uh, have certain words which are uh, actually orders of the words are changed for the sake of rhyme scheme breezes free should have been free breezes so this is an example of inversion see the next line the shaft of beauty towering high this is very important part where we consider tree to be shaft of beauty you see the poet depicts what the poet depicts the poet depicts that the plant to be shaft what is a shaft actually a shaft is a pole and the tree is compared with a pole actually which is beautiful how the tree is beautiful here the beauty of a plant is meaningful in many ways a plant with greenery you see if a plant is there greenery is there greenery is the beautiful makeup of the earth right and a lot of fresh oxygen makes our environment aptly beautiful this is required this is the uh, key to our existence apart from that flowers fruits and other advantages which add to the beauty of the plant we have flowers we have fruits and other lots of advantages that you know nicely this is going to add to the beauty of the plant then the poet goes on about the height of the tree which aptly compares with a tower we here the poet says that tree is like a tower so high and so high and so uh, strong to present it to be uh, certainly positive aspects of nature you see figures of speech used metaphor the shaft of beauty is compared with towering high is uh, 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 I beg your pardon this is going to be shaft of beauty is compared with plant and again the towering high is also going to be compared with the plant here comes two figures of speeches here two metaphors actually and uh, the shaft of beauty and towering high both compares here with the plant anyway he plants a home to heaven and I heaven and I and I and I you need to get the meaning of an I first you see I have written here closure closure is an I so fifth line the poet says that a planting a tree is like it is like your home it's like your home your home is a beautiful one when you plant tree I mean your earth is a beautiful home and the trees without tree this is impossible so you make home and at the same time you take you this take you the this is this makes you feel a closer to heaven figures of speeches used here what are the figures of speeches you see symbolism heaven is not meant here as heaven literally the poet doesn't mean heaven where angels god goddesses and all these things are there he means a sky okay figures of speech used metaphor plant is compared with home and then we get to see inversion to heaven and I. So it should have been what? An I to heaven. An I to heaven. Order of the word changed here. So this is an example of inversion for you. 
You see, next one. For song and mother croon of bird. In this line, sixth line, this poet goes on stating the earthly benefits that we have. We have lots of earthly benefits of planting a tree. What he says? Favorable atmosphere for beautiful singing birds. And beautiful singing birds, they make the plants their home. And they run their beautiful natural life over there. And they go on singing. Here the mother bird is also shown with the baby birds and they go on singing over there in this atmosphere. No figures of speeches are there. Notable figures of speeches are not over here. Uh, though uh, little sense of antithesis could be found here. Anyway, in hushed and happy twilight heart. What is a twilight? Twilight is a particular point of time. This is not dusk. Remember this. This is not dusk. Twilight is called just a momentary period of light after the sunset. So, here take a look at the natural atmosphere that the poet stayed in. A hushed and happy twilight. What a beautiful imagery put over here. You see, in the seventh line, the poet focuses on the atmosphere with the birds serenade. This means singing. Serenade, beautiful songs. The poet sets the time of twilight when the birds solemnize their divine home. They go on celebrating their divine home. What is that? Because the speeches are used here. Alteration, hushed and happy. H, H. Then inversion, in hushed and happy twilight heard. It should have been heard in hushed and happy twilight. This should have been in this way presented. Personification. Here, twilight has been attributed with human quality. You see, twilight is called happy. It cannot be happy, correct? It's a human quality and twilight is attributed with human quality. So, it's an example of personification. Transport habitat. You see, twilight. Twilight, actually the quality of, quality of human, this is associated with the word twilight. This is an example of transferred epithet. You see the, the treble of heaven's harmony. The treble of heaven's harmony. In this, this line actually, the poet tells us the holistic and beautiful aspect of nature. He, as adduced by the uh, poet, uh, he considers planting a tree is like close and serene harmony of nature. You know, a pure close, nice association with the nature. And this heavenly harmony is termed treble. Treble in the sense intensifying or increasing three times more. Three times more it is increased. So the beauty in the pure harmony of nature, things are three times intense or oh, beautiful you can say. What are the figures of speech used here? The treble, one alliteration, heaven's harmony, another alliteration. See the last line of the first stanza. These things he plants who plants a tree. You see, the poet here reiterates. The poet here reiterates that planting a tree is just not planting a tree. It is something far more positive than that. Hello, welcome back. Uh, let's talk about stanza 2. So here it goes, stanza 2. We have already got to know the things in the stanza 1. See nicely here. What does he plant? He plants a, who plants a tree. Here the poet again goes on reiterating the refrain. I said you the first stanza, refrain. He reiterates here the stanza. And he says that, he says the same old message to us. He conveys the message to us. What? One who plants a tree is not only just planting a tree, rather much, much more vital and auspicious things he is doing here. We don't have any figures of speech over here, remarkable one. And then you see, second number line, what he says here, he plants cool shade and tender rain. Here it goes. So the poet says that one who plants a tree, actually he plants cool shade and tender rain. It's a benefits of planting a tree. This actually reflects the benefits of planting a tree. You know, planting a tree means here lots of things to be in fine tune 
and this will spontaneously help the ecosystem of the earth you know it will maintain the ecosystem of the earth and enough trees means proper and abundant rainfall and if abundant rainfall is there then sure and certain there will be all fresh lush greenery agriculture which will actually bring prosperity to us and this is only the key vitality of the earth what is the figure of speech used here paraphrases he plants cool shed and tender rain this cool shed and tender rain indirectly it is meaning that planting a tree is equals to planting or bringing shed and tender rain next line take a look at was the next line and seed and bad days but of days to be the point in this line he goes on adding that how planting a tree will make sure what fertile land you know if you plant tree there will not be soil erosion if you plant tree there would be enough natural manuring occurring and thus the land will turn into fertile land and there will be what prospect of sowing seed you can sow a seed when the land is fertile and planting a tree, tree will make sure that one and then what will be happening lush growth and then as there will be proper germination growth there will be buds coming out and it will actually guarantee the sustainability of the earth what is the figure of speech used here seed and bud you see ascending order of words of importance next slide and years that fade and flush again this line is vital questions may be from here as this actually indirectly indicates uh, the positive aspects of rain you see here what happens in this line the poet goes on saying that how lush growth germination it is going to take place after dry and scorching period of time you see if you talk about cycle of earth the seasonal cycle I'm talking about it comes the seasons different different seasons come we get to see summer we get to see monsoon we get to see uh, autumn we get to see winter we get to see spring so these are all cycled thing so where th this is a normal thing that lush growth and germination is going to take place after there is dry and scorching period of time the poet actually indicates how the natural cycle of the year continues so I said it already he doesn't want us to forget that planting trees is the proper way of maintaining this healthy cycle of earth the fed and flush that had taken place after that there would be monsoon there would be other seasons and there would be proper way of germination taking place here by sowing seed and then budding into the trees what is the figure of speech here fed and flush you can see f f he plants the glory of the plain. Now, this is one of the beautiful, uh, you can say, way of describing how this planting tree is the glory of the plain. You see, if we think glory of the plain, what is that? It is not the humans. It is not the big, big buildings we, we make. It is not those beautiful places made by the humans. No, the glory of the plain is, of course, and of course, the trees that we plant. The plants, planting trees are the real and the true glory of the plain. The existence of us actually possible if there is, there is the existence of the trees. With oxygen, fruits, flowers, food, greenery, this make actually beautiful. This plain, this earth becomes beautiful only by these things. In the true sense, this is tree which makes our earth beautiful what are the figures which used here here the plants are compared with the glory of the plane this is of course an example of metaphor next line he plants the forest's forest's heritage was that in the second line the poet takes us to the understanding what is that forest land is actually a sustainable part of nature what is sustainable part of, part of nature it is not that a tree grows and the tree dies and this is the end no we get to see it is continuously and spontaneously generation of generation of trees go on staying in the forest land it is perpetually sustaining new saplings 
actually take over the old saplings, old trees. That means the younger one taking over the older one. The place of the older one is replaced by the younger one. This new sapling, new trees will be coming in place of the old one. This is the heritage. This is only the way the forest land survives, sustains. What is the figure of speech used here? Metaphor. What is there? Plants are compared here with the heritage. Okay. Next line. The harvest of a coming age. It's a coming age. This talks about posterity. That is future generation. Now he says that the point here talks about the transition, a changeover, you know, change from the tender year to adulthood which is also a reference to the tree growing from a sapling into a tree. So here uh, there is a common, you can say common comparison. Comparison with human life with trees. Trees and the human, these are more or less similar in comparison here. What the poet says? The poet says here there, as in the human, transition takes place from youth to adulthood. In the same way, transition takes place from sapling into a tree. This is actually the young trees growing bigger and taking the taking over the forest land. What is the figure of speech used here? Here, this is metaphor. Cycle of the plant. Beg your pardon, I have cut it. Just a minute. Huh? Cycle of the plant is actually compared with the cycle of the humans. This is thematic metaphor. And you see next, the joy that unborn eyes shall see. What is joy that unborn eyes shall see? What joy is talked about? What is unborn eye? Unborn eye, you can, you can guess it, the one who did not take birth yet. Here the poet actually refers that the beauty and the enriching value of planting a tree will be joyously witnessed. Who will be witnessing it? Unborn eyes. How will you witness? With joy. So the unborn eyes will witness the joy and he will appreciate. He will appreciate what? He will appreciate the planting of trees. So if you talk about in a categorical manner, the present generation who plant a tree will be appreciated by the next generation who is unborn still and he will appreciate with, with enthusiasm and joy that a great work of planting tree had been done and that is the, that is the reason they, were, they are in right now in plenty and prosperity and of course in a healthy state. Figures of speech used here, euphemism, unborn eyes actually meaning future generations in an indirect way of stating things. Alliteration shall see. Here you can see S S shall see. Now these things he plants who plants a tree. This is the last line of the second stanza. And we get to see the same thing here. Was that this is the same kind of line that we got to see in stanza one. Just let me scroll it over once so that you get it properly. Here you see these things he plants who plants a tree. So the poet here repeatedly reiterating that these are the benefits that we get while we plant a tree. So planting a tree is just not planting a tree. Planting a tree means ushering a lots of positive and auspicious things into our life and in the, in the good health of the earth. What is the figure of speech used here? These things, the literature is a T, T coming together. Now let us talk about stanza 3. You see, again, the first line, the same refrain. What does he plant? Who plants a tree? Now here, even in the third stanza, actually, the poet goes on again, making us recapitulate the importance of planting tree. He plants in sap and leaf and wood. Second line this is. The point here talks about the one who plants a tree is actually indicating uh, and ensuring. What is he indicating and ensuring? 
he is indicated in ensuring the auspicious, luscious and positive growth of the earth. And how this is going to give us a healthy lease to the future generations. You see here, if you plant a tree, this, these are in different different forms. We shall get to see the plant in sapling, in growing young leafy tree and then in wood. This can mean in lush forest land. Now the poet says here that planting a tree means planting from in these stages and thus this is going to bring auspicious health of the earth, positive growth of the earth and this is a lease to the healthy human. What are the figures of speech is used here? We have got here figures of speech is in the form of climax. Here it is climax. What is the climax? You see ascending order of importance. Words arranged in ascending order of importance. How? Sap, leaf and wood. Now you see next line. In love of home and loyalty. What the poet says here, the one who plants a tree actually, this he does. Why? For the sake of the love and loyalty to the near and dear ones. You do it because you love your near and dear ones. You show loyalty to your near and dear ones. You want to ensure their healthy and prosperous life. You know, this little, this is a very little act of planting tree, but this is a vital act of planting tree. This actually makes a man in the real sense. You are a man if you plant a tree. And you are a man in the real sense if you plant a tree for your near and dear ones for the sake of love and loyalty. There is no uh, important figures of speech used here. So we shall move to the next line. And far cast thought of civic good. He says that one who plants a tree, he does it why? He does not do this one for self-benefit. He even does it for what? He considers that it to be the civic duty to do good to the people of the society he is a part of. So he does it as he thinks that this is going to be a far stretched or civic duty that he must accomplish. And he does plant a tree for this particular sole purpose. Next line, take a look at his blessings on the neighborhood. Again, this line is connected to the previous line. That is, this previous line. So, if we connect it and read, uh, and far cast thought of civic good, his blessings on the neighborhood, he goes on saying, what he goes on saying that? He who plants a tree, actually he does it with a duty and responsibility to his neighbor. This is showing red because this is this has got an American style of spelling. Anyway, uh, just get it that he does plant a tree and he does bless. He does bless on his neighborhood. He actually does a duty and responsibility which benefits and uh, acts as a blessing to his neighborhood. This act proves as the act of blessing to his neighbor. You plant a tree, this is not going to be solely for your benefit. Planting a tree is all benevolent. It acts only as a positive way for everybody, whether it is you or for your neighbor. Okay, see, who in the hollow of his hand? What is the hollow of his hand? We cup our hand. This is a formation of hollow of the hand. The poet here goes on appreciating. He, what does he appreciate? He goes on appreciating that the one who plants a tree, because it is he who with his positive act brings development to the country. So uh, who with his, who in the hollow of his hand, actually hollow of his hand indirectly indicates the good work of uh, doing this vital work of planting tree. One who does this, he actually holds, next line, the growth of all our land. Now the growth of the land is depending on that person who with the help of his hand plants of tree, plants tree and thus ensures the prosperity and uh, development of the country. The previous stanza that uh, figures of speech that we did not talk about that is his hand. You see holds all the growth of our land. One who 
with the whole of his hand holds the growth of our land. Here, who plants a tree? He ensures. What he ensures? Agricultural growth of the country. And agricultural growth of the country will ensure overall positive health of the land. If there is agricultural growth, there will be all other types of growth in a particular country. And thus, the basic human development will take place. So he says, the poet says, one who plants a tree, actually he holds the growth of all our land. See, next line. A nation's growth from sea to sea. What does it mean by sea to sea? Here the poet consciously used here C to C. He wanted to mean that a nation's growth, one who plants a tree, is actually like the real hero, hero of the nation. He is the most idle one because he is the one who takes the growth of the glory of the nation from C to C. Indicating what? Indicating different parts of the world. Glory of the country will be taken to one part of the world to other part of the world. It is going to be possible because the person who planted the tree, he did the most meaningful and intelligent work. That is the key to our existence and development and sustainability. What is the figure of speech used here? C to C alteration. S. S. C. Stirs in his heart who plants a tree. Now, it is said that in the last line, the poet wants to convey that the key person for a country is the one who cares planting trees because is the one who cares planting trees because this is simple and noble work this is going to do this is going to do the ultimate good to the country and to the people in it what is this because figures of speech used here alliteration once again he's hurt see thank you for watching actually we have come to the end of this uh, video tutorial of a line by line analysis of the heart of the tree and uh, this is go outpace uh, website you can go to the link here this is the link of this particular text file you can click in here you'll get the link in the description down and uh, this you can also of course visit for more uh, like this kind of videos to my channel paper tutorials and along with that you'll get to get the all the files and all there in my website goutpress.com. Thank you very much for watching. To subscribe my channel, please press the subscribe button and to get a notification first, press the bell. And of course, thank you for watching.